Have you ever gone on Google Earth and you've pinched out and you see like your state and your country and the entire globe? You see the entire globe and you understand how the whole world works. What if we did this for the history of humanity? Find out on this episode of Inverse. Hey guys, welcome to Inverse. We have a new quarter and for the next three months, we're gonna be looking at last day events. So if you don't have one, you wanna get a Bible or download it on your phone, we're gonna look at Daniel, Revelation, Matthew, and all sorts of stuff all over the Bible that pertain to last day events. It's a heavy topic, so you wanna get your brain caps on, you're gonna get your hands together, we're gonna to pray together, and we're gonna have a conversation with my friends and really get into the Word of God, yeah? Sebastian, can you start us off with prayer? Absolutely. Let us pray. Father in heaven, as we begin this new quarter in your word, especially dealing with end time events, we pray that you would guide us lesson by lesson, text by text, to see Christ and not just the crisis that is coming, and to show us, Lord, how to be ready for that soon return of Christ. Is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Siku, can you read from Revelation chapter 12? We'll get, go get there at the end of the, hopefully, if we, if we manage our time well, uh, we'll get to Revelation 12, but we want to kind of hit the Revelation 12 verse 17, uh, which is kind of the apex of that chapter. Okay. Um, Revelation 12, 17 says, And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So Israel, like sometimes, like I kind of mentioned in the opener, um, you know, we're just by ourselves, and we have these questions about me and God. And so sometimes the Bible is kind of like, kind of like a Google Earth thing or Google Maps. You kind of zoom out and kind of gives you a little bit of perspective. And we call this, at least in, in theology or church language, the meta narrative or <laughs> the great controversy, the cosmic story. It's mm -hmm. not like Star Wars. But anyway, can you can you give us more insight? What is a meta narrative, and how does that help us? The meta narrative, when it comes to the Bible, is simply the story behind the story, mm. and it's the lens by which we understand the story of Scripture. You take it from Genesis to Revelation, mm -hmm. you get this overwhelming picture of what is taking place. Mm -hmm. And what is taking place in the Bible is the fact that there is a, there's a, a relationship between God and His people. That relationship is broken as a result of sin. Mm -hmm. This takes place in, in, in heaven, but it falls down to earth. And now you and I, all of us are involved in this story and the gospel or the Bible story mm -hmm. is telling us how we navigate through this meta narrative. Mm -hmm. Seems like almost every every story, every every movie, every everything out there has kind of a story within the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when you're watching movies or reading novels or whatever, you're trying to figure out the rules of this world or the characters or how it's a world building, which is really popular these days in, in all yeah. the different weird worlds that are. And so the Bible also also has that. Let's start from I don't know, let's go to Isaiah 14. Yeah. Isaiah 14, verse 12 through 14, and we'll start there. And, and Siku, can you read for us chapter 14, 12 through 14? Okay. Um, verse 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Mm -hmm. So give us an insight there. What's going on in, in, that, in that passage? Well, it says in verse 12 mm -hmm. that this individual who's speaking, who's speaking in their heart, is Lucifer. Mm -hmm. um, so this angel who falls from heaven and the the the... the thoughts that he's having within himself. So these are not things that he's saying outrightly. He says, You're, you have said in your heart. So these are, this is the working of his mind. This is, these are the motivations behind what he ends up doing. Mm -hmm. His desire is to ascend. And it's this, I will do this and I will do this and I want to be great and I want to be recognized and I, 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 I want to lift myself 
up and be exalted. So we're getting insights into how the great controversy, this meta narrative, how it got started. Mm -hmm. So you have this character, Lucifer, and he's starting with I, 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 I. There's a selfishness. Mm -hmm. That's um, the opposite of that is what? What's what's the regular atmosphere that he's reacting against? Well, Sebastian? I think he, he's in heaven in a place where he who is the greatest is the one that serves all creatures. Yeah. Right. So while he's asserting his will and saying this is the greatness that I want to ascend to, God is the one that is constantly humbling himself to reveal himself to his creatures, to serve them, and to take care of them. Mm -hmm. So he's for sure in contrast to the very culture and atmosphere of what heaven is all about. Mm -hmm. How to govern is the key that is taking place. You have the government of God. What is the it's best a way? Argument, yeah, it's you're a saying. yeah, yes. and and I think it it, it combines. What you let, it starts off as a political sure, argument, sure. I guess. And so you have what is the best way to govern, and God is saying that the best way to govern is through the government of love, and Satan here, Lucifer, is attacking that. Either he's saying, you know, actually the way you are governing is not love because you have this law, or the way that you are governing is not correct, is not strong enough. And so you have this through unselfishness. And so you have uh, Satan or Lucifer who is essentially attacking the very foundation of the government of God. He's saying there's a better way to run this world than the way it is currently being run. And so that's ultimately what he's, what he's I saying. Think, I think what's kind of huge about what you're driving at is when you go back to verse 14, he says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So there's also this element What's of, wrong of with jealousy. That? I mean, don't we all want to be like mm -hmm. the Most High? We all want to be like well, God. Well, I, I think so you know there's on? there's a there's a careful like sleight of hand there, right? Some rhetoric right. that's present in that, where it's like I want to be like Jesus, but being like Him means similar but not the same, right? Versus Lucifer here, he wants to obtain the power and the authority and the yeah. the. Well, he says verse position. 13. He wants to sit in the right. mount of, of the, the congregation on the, the farthest sides of the north. We see, and later on, that's where God's throne is on the side of the north. Exactly. He wants to not be like Jesus. He, he wants, wants to repeat Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's critical because it, it lets you know that this jealousy was present as a part of the the initial seed for this kind of controversy to come mm -hmm. about. And if you and I have ever experienced anything painful in life when it comes to jealousy, we know how you know insidious and how maniacal jealousy can be because of that desire to say, in order for me to get what I want, I have to take it from you and you must lose. I think these principles are very, very, very important because uh, we, we see that in other worlds or other um, narratives out there, I mean, you have someone's causing a problem. Well, let me just <laughs> electrocute you and, <laughs> and eliminate you and then story over. Right. But we don't see that happening in this episode. We don't see this happening really throughout human history yet. Right. And it's something to, I don't want, I don't want to uh, ruin the ending, but... Uh, <laughs> it you? takes place at some point, but what's important about this passage is, especially when you get into the story of Jesus, when Jesus comes and tabernacles with humankind in, in the Gospels, yes. you have a lot of, you know, the common parables, like the kingdom of heaven is like. And this story, the story of Satan and Jesus, helps us understand how Jesus comes and establishes his kingdom. He establishes his kingdom as a seed. He establishes his kingdom as a small growing plant. Mm -hmm. And the reason why he does that is found here because the story or the battle begins not with war, but it begins with seeds, the mm -hmm. seeds of jealousy. Mm -hmm. These things that begin as small Pride, little, uh, yeah, it, they begin as small little things, but ultimately grow to blossom be huge. Yeah, big blossom big, something yeah. big. I love this because the principles you're mentioning here impacts how governments work, it impacts how parents should raise their children, mm -hmm. how we react when we get a speeding ticket and we feel in justice or justice or I mean it's just it's so very the fabric of a lot of being human if is, is found in this meta narrative um, let's go to Ezekiel 28 and I think gives that gives also further insights into this uh, story Ezekiel 28 and Israel can you read that 28 we'll start from verse uh, let's start from verse 12 onwards Ezekiel 28 12 I think I found it here Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. Okay, so there's a dual application here. One, literally for the king of Tyre, but then it mm -hmm. zooms out because realize that no human being can fulfill this. So it says uh, in verse 12, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God, very, a very precious 
stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the turquoise. Okay, all those jewels on stuff. Go to verse and, 14. Okay. <laughs> all right. He doesn't want to hear the pearls. Okay. Don't want the I mean, all this uh, right. bling bling. Yeah, and then verse 14. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Verse 16. Oh, keep going. All right. <laughs> the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the, for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. Okay, we'll stop there. So Isaiah 14 kind of opened it up, and then Ezekiel's actually kind of getting into a little bit more detail. What's going on here, Sebastian? Well, the first thing you notice is, number one, this is dealing with the past of what he was. So mm -hmm. there's a reflection where he says, you were the seal of perfection. Mm -hmm. You were full of wisdom. You were all these things. You were the anointed cherub that covers. And then he says in verse 15, until iniquity was found in you. Mm -hmm. So this shows that God did not create the devil. Right. The devil was not a part of God's original equation for the universe. Mm -hmm. And that es essentially some point came in time where something was found inside of him. Mm -hmm. Right. That came up. And this was sin. This was iniquity. We also find that he was perfect, right? It says he was a seal of perfection in verse 12. He goes on to say in verse 15, you were perfect in your ways, mm -hmm. right? So you're, you're looking at the fall of Lucifer and how all the position that he held as the anointed cherub that covers, right? He was in the very presence Super high of God. position, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And which is kind of awkward when you're looking at, you know, Isaiah 14 to say, well, here you are as the anointed cherub that covers, and you're like, I want to go even higher. higher. Mm -hmm. You're not even content with the great auspicious position that God has put you in today. Mm -hmm. And I think that becomes a even further insight from the great controversy to say, when we're looking at these end times and grappling with life, it's like, am I learning to be content mm -hmm. in the position that God has put me in today? And mm -hmm. I appreciate how um, Ezekiel brings light to what we saw in Isaiah. This thing that he was saying in his heart, Ezekiel says, it's because you, God created you this way, because you are beautiful, because you've got all these things that God invested in you, mm -hmm. instead of looking to God and praising Him for what He has done in you and what He is doing through you, you wanted even more than what God had given to you. You mm -hmm. said, you know, it's not enough. I, I want to be more than what God has appointed me to be. Mm -hmm. I'm not satisfied mm -hmm. with the position that God has given to me. And like Sebastian was saying, this gives insight into, you know, even personal challenges with, you know, I have this position, but I'm dissatisfied with what God has oh, There's a personal me ethic do. we can learn from the example of, of Lucifer here. So we're seeing here there are, there are characters. Satan is not some, some symbol of evil. He's an actual individual, and there's a story here. Find out more about this great controversy when we come after the break.
Hey guys, we're in Ezekiel 28, and there's some other points that we want to make here, because this is a really good study on the yes. great controversy on this character of Lucifer. Sebastian. So the other thing I wanted to mention here is when you look in Ezekiel 28, and the Bible says in verse 13, right there at the end, after naming all these beautiful ways of which he was decorated, it says, was prepared for you on the day you were created. Mm. And this is a, a very important element because it, it shows that there's two levels of existence, regardless of how high Lucifer was in his mind, to think that he could move from the category of created to the creator, creator, right? is An ontological impossibility. Complete, because when you look at a created being, the reason for its existence is outside of itself mm. versus the creator, his reason is within himself, right? He's a self-existent being. So the, the very insanity of what he's trying to do shows where pride and jealousy will drive you mm -hmm. to say, listen, your reason for existence is outside of yourself. None of these things are intrinsically in you. I mean, his level of injustice is, is quite unreasonable. He wants to for something that's impossible to mm -hmm. happen, and he's he, this anger and jealousy and all this bad stuff is 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 and it, and it, it shows it. the delusional, you know, aspect of pride, yeah. right, and hubris to say yeah, you can yeah. become so arrogant in your mind that you're disconnected from reality. Yeah, mm. awesome, awesome. The, Any others? Yeah. Well, yeah, the context right. of, and it's important for us to understand the context of the character of Lucifer. The character of Lucifer is only portrayed as he attacks the character of God, mm. right? And so, and, and, and in verse 13, Wait, you find... Say that one more time. That, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's profound. The, the character of I Lucifer is, is only is portrayed, portrayed, portrayed as a reaction to the character of yeah, God. Thank you. Appreciate I got you, bro. Right, got me. All right, so, hey, in, so in verse 13, you, verse have, 13. you have a very um, critical representation of who God is. And it says, you know, the workmanship and all these different things that you are, it was prepared for you on the day that you were created. Mm. Here we have a small insight into the character of God, and that is that God prepared Lucifer to be who he was. Mm -hmm. In other words, he, he prepared him to be beautiful. He, in his mind, in the mind of God, he had a vision for Lucifer that was an awesome vision, right? And if you look at the story yeah. of what is taking place in, in the verses that we just read, you have here who Lucifer was, was different from who he became. Mm. It's you know you be, you right. became. So who Lucifer this. is today, Satan is not the was the original intention. Right, of it's God. something. It's someone that he became, and yes. you find that in verse sixteen. You were all this until you became. You were filled mm -hmm. with whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so you have here in in uh, in the story, you have a picture of the character of God, that is being attacked by Satan. And so we have to understand that. In, in the world that we live in today, the character of God is constantly being attacked. God is evil. God is this. God is that. These arguments are not new. They were not created. They were not developed. They were not right. started by human beings. They were actually the very foundation of them that were created in heaven by Lucifer himself, mm -hmm. where he said, you are not fit, you're not worthy, you're not loving. And in that, in that condemnation of Satan towards God, Satan's character is revealed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love verse 16. It says, by the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within. And that word for trading in the original language actually means slander. It means mm. the traffic of your words, one version says. So it's this is not a, what we're seeing is a war is happening, kind of a rebellion in, in heaven, the most perfect place in the entire universe. And this isn't where there's, you know, swords and lasers and sword lasers. and Swashbuckling. Uh, yeah, this isn't a war of, of <laughs> weapons. But uh, words are being played out. This is a propaganda polemic war. Uh, which, which is, is even actually, more dangerous, right? It's actually working. And right now, right now, we are in the midst of a war. There's these ideas. There's some, we're having this TV show. There are these ideas being filtered back and forward. And we're communicating these ideas. These are ideas that are the bullets in this, in this large spiritual And world. it's fitting because ideas are the most powerful mm. things in the world. People will die for ideas. Mm -hmm. Ideas will change, revolutionize governments. Ideas begin in eternity past. Mm -hmm. Also very interesting that God is limited in the sense that he needs to allow these principles of his government of love to take time and, yes. and, and develop. Whereas Satan can use any, any, any tool, any avenue out there. Yep. So it kind of gives you a, a reason why we are here in 2018, uh, in, according to the Gregorian, are we in a Gregorian calendar? Whatever calendar we're in. Yes. Uh, but. I mean, the largest yeah. question is, why are we still here? What's 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 all this doing? It, it's it's encouraging, like you're saying, getting a picture of that, the, the reason that we're still here, that God allowing this to play out, actually 
is a result of the character of God, mm -hmm. right? If God was mean and vindictive, oh, you cross me, okay, game <laughs> over. Yeah, yeah because yeah, yeah. I created you, I can take you out, right? Yeah. But God isn't that kind of a God. Yeah. God is the kind of God who gives an opportunity for, for his character to be revealed and people to choose him because of who he is. And I think that's, that's a critical point, that obedience has to come from the heart, right? That God, you know, not destroying Lucifer, right, would put people to say, I'm gonna obey him in fear. Right. If I get rid of you right away, it's like, bro, if you disagree with him, it's over. Like, ju you're you're zapped, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, then it's let's, like it's let's, over. Uh, so let's go to the sound effects. Let's go to <laughs> Genesis three. Well, you guys let's go to like Genesis three, <laughs> and the Bible doesn't really get into too much of what happened in heaven outside of two passages that we read, but it really explains a lot what happens here on earth. And so you see the first episode happening here on earth. Um, Israel, can you read chapter three? Verses 1 through, I don't know, verse 7. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day that you eat, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Okay, we'll stop there. What's going on here? What's going on in Genesis? The great controversy has now impacted, has now hit planet uh, Earth. Planet Earth. Yeah. And Love, for love to be real, for love to be legitimate, for love to be enduring, love must be tested. And so here you have humanity failing its test of loving God the Creator. That's good, that's good. Say that again, can you say that again? Do you love must you be said? tested, I can't remember. But, <laughs> but love good. must yeah, be tested gotta rewind and, and get, get, get that and, and, yeah. and, and tweet it because yeah. we, we're, we're, that was good. So love needs to be tested, and this is a, a test, the, the yeah, tree of test. knowledge of good and evil, yeah, yeah okay. Well, I, I think it's also a, a test in the sense of the freedom. Right, because the the command freedom of the freedom of will, the fr okay. freedom of choice. Sorry. Freedom of choice, yes, not yes. freedom of will. Uh, but having free will, and God did not compel Adam and Eve right okay. to obey, and Lucifer was exploiting this freedom, right, that God had bestowed to Adam. So he and creates this world right. for Adam and Eve, and he gives right. them an out at any time if they ever want to unplug. That's right, to show right, which reveals his character. Yeah, right. He didn't force them. He yeah. just said, hey, look, you may eat of every tree, but of this one, right? God didn't go to the tree and there was like an electric fence, you know, <laughs> no, step away from the tree. I won't allow you to There's disobey. There's an open door to leave it. If you want to disobey yeah. and you want to operate on a different principle, you're yeah. at license. So the, so the way that Lucifer, that the serpent, and we find out who it is, the devil, right, in Revelation chapter 12, identifies him. The serpent, the devil. Yeah, two, same. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, the way that he approaches Eve and what he says to Eve, it... It comes out of what he was thinking in heaven, what we already read in Isaiah chapter 14 and Ezekiel 28. Hmm. So he was thinking these things and he's got these accusations against God. This war starts in heaven. And so when he comes and he addresses Eve and he questions God's character, it's, a, it's an attack on God's character because he says, God knows, right? God is trying to withhold something from you. God is trying to withhold something good. Mm -hmm. And now Eve has an opportunity either to believe the character of God who she already has met mm -hmm. and she she knows who God is or here is another picture of God being presented to her and am I going to go with this picture of God or am I going to with this picture of mm -hmm. God and that becomes the question that we're faced mm -hmm. with every day mm -hmm. is there these pictures of God that are being put out there there's a picture of God that is presented in scripture mm -hmm. am I going to believe that picture or am I going to go with the lies that are being told about God, that he's mean mm -hmm. and vindictive, and he's hiding something from you, and he's sneaky. Yeah. So we looked at chapter kind of chapter one, or chapter zero, the prequel, <laughs> if you will, and now we're here on Earth. Let's go to Revelation 12, and I'm gonna zoom out, and Revelation is now gonna hit every kind of battle that's happened throughout Something history. we can't leave out, though, is the fact that in Genesis 3, uh, the the war that Satan is raging against God mm -hmm. is not only a war to reinstate himself into government, but is also a war to hurt God. Mm -hmm. And and by bringing by bringing sin into planet Earth, he, this is Satan's greatest strike against God. And and so this is where you you know you're kind of zooming out, you're zooming back in, you're zooming back out. So you have here a picture of Satan trying to hurt God, mm -hmm. and and this is what is now taking place. The 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 chapter in our story is 
everything that happens to us negatively hurts God. And that's what Satan is doing when he introduces sin to Adam mm -hmm, and Eve. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. God is going to ultimately show that although sin produces death, there is something stronger than death, and that is love. 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 Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay, let's go to Revelation 12 here. I'll read from verse 1. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, uh, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. And then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. Another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery dragon having seven heads, ten horns, seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven. We find later to be angels, yes, and drew them to the earth. The dragon stood before the woman and was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman was fled into the wilderness, into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that she should feed her there 1,260 days. Verse 7, a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, and they did not prevail, nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, that Siku talked about, serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now you're seeing here kind of this, this playing out in history, and then it kind of, uh, kind of re reverb or re, I don't know. It anyway. repeats and enlarges. It re repeats and enlarges. Yeah, there, that's, <laughs> there you go. Um, what's, what's going on here? Do you see multiple battles, different stages? Kind of someone give an elucidation here. Well, you're, you're kind of taking, first of all, this is the war that started in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now this comes down. He tries to consume the child. He loses. This is Jesus, the child. Jesus yes. is the child, right? Mm -hmm. So you, what you basically are getting is a litany of all the failures of the devil, mm -hmm. right? Continually over and over again, one person said that if you continue to do the same thing, expecting a different result, right? That's the definition of insanity. Mm -hmm. And here this dragon comes, okay, I'm going to try to fight him in heaven. You did not prevail. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to get the child. You did not prevail. I'm going to try to chase this woman. There was a place prepared for her by God in the wilderness. You did not prevail, right? All the way to our scripture reading of making war against the remnant of her seed. Mm -hmm. This chapter is designed for people in the end times to encourage them mm -hmm. to say the devil has lost to Jesus every single over, round over of this great controversy. Which gives God us wins. a lot of hope in our day yes. because our story is the last episode, well, not the last episode, but the most immediate episode in this great controversy. Mm -hmm. That if Satan has lost in each of these, these battles, he will lose in our own lot, in, in the, the battle of our lot. Amen. Yeah? Amen. How many of you want the victory in your life? I need it, I need it today. Yes. I need it in my family. I need it in my life. How many of you guys need it? How many of you want Jesus to be the victor in your own personal great controversy? Thank you so much for watching Inverse. Hope you've been blessed by today's Bible study. Join us next week.